Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial what we are going to do is discuss how it is that we represent isotopes in written form and then also talk a little bit about how we can use information related to isotopes to calculate the average atomic masses that we see in the periodic table for each of the elements. So let's begin with talking about how it is that we represent isotopes in written form. Um, as it turns out, there are a couple of options. One of those options is something that we call hyphen notation. And what hyphen notation is, is essentially a way that we can communicate the mass number of an isotope and also the identity of the nucleus that is related to that particular isotope. So the format for hyphen notation is essentially just taking the element name writing a hyphen and then I'm going to put a number after this hyphen all right and the number represents the mass number of the isotope so for example if I write oxygen 16 then I'm letting the reader know that I'm discussing an isotope of oxygen and that that oxygen isotope has a mass number of 16. Another example would be something like carbon 13, where once again, the nucleus of the isotope is a carbon nucleus, and the mass number of this isotope is 13, meaning that the sum of the neutrons and the protons in the nucleus should be 13. Um, however, another way that we can actually refer to isotopes is by using something called nuclide notation. Right? And so when we're using nuclide notation, the format's a little bit different, but as I mentioned, it's a little bit more informative. In nuclide notation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the element symbol found in the periodic table for the nucleus of the isotope. Then I'm going to put in two numbers on the left hand side of the symbol, one in the upper left, one in the lower left. The number in the upper left is going to be the mass number, and the number in the lower left is going to be the atomic number. Okay, so Let's take these same examples that I wrote in hyphen notation and see if we can piece together the corresponding nuclide notation. Okay, in order for me to do that, a periodic table would be helpful. So I have one here. Okay, now again, I'm going to be looking at oxygen. All right, now if we look at oxygen carefully, all right, oxygen has an atomic number of 8, as we can see right here in this box. Okay, so if I go and take that with me to my workspace, I'm going to use the symbol for oxygen. Okay, I know that oxygen's atomic number is 8 because I looked it up in the periodic table, and from the hyphen notation, I know that my mass number is 16, so I'm going to write the mass number in the upper left. So here is the nuclide symbol for oxygen 16. Now I'm going to do the same for carbon. And let me go back to the periodic table. All right, if I go back to the periodic table, all right, here is carbon's box right here. Carbon symbol is C, and its atomic number is 6. So, taking that back to my workspace, if I'm going to write a nuclide notation for carbon-13, I need carbon's element symbol. I just found out that its atomic number is 6, and from the hyphen notation, I know that the mass number is 13. So I would write 13 in the upper left, and then this would be the nuclide symbol or the nuclide notation for the carbon-13 isotope. Let's do a couple more examples similar to this. All right, so if I take a look at these examples, I have uranium-232. 
Well, as I mentioned, these numbers after the hyphens are ma mass numbers for each of my isotopes. So I'm going to start writing the nuclide notation by using the symbol for uranium, which is just a U. If I take a look at uranium's box down here. And the atomic number for uranium is 92. So I'm going to go and write 92 in the lower left. And the mass number that was provided to me, 232, will go in the upper left. So if you recall, when we talked about how to understand the composition, the subatomic particle composition of isotopes in the last tutorial. But the atomic number lets me know that I have 92 protons in this isotope. Since the atom is neutral, meaning it doesn't have a positive or a negative charge, that means there also must be 92 electrons. If I want to find out the number of neutrons, then what that means is I'm going to have to take the mass number and subtract the number of protons. So in this case, that would be 232 minus 92. That means I have 140 neutrons in this isotope. Let's work on this next one, cadmium-113. So I'm going to go into the periodic table and look up cadmium. Cadmium is right here in the periodic table. And if you look closely, the atomic number for cadmium is 48. So I'm going to go and use cadmium symbol, which from the periodic table we could see was capital C, lowercase d. I found out that its atomic number was 48. And I'm going to use the given mass number from the hyphen notation, 113, in the upper left of this same symbol. And once again, using the concepts we learned in the last tutorial, I should be able to recognize that there are 48 protons, because that's the atomic number for cadmium. Since the atom is neutral, that means there are 48 electrons. If I want to figure out the number of neutrons, then again I'd have to take the mass number and subtract the number of protons. So that would be 113 minus 48, and that's 65 neutrons. Okay. Now, as I said in the beginning of this tutorial, we can also use information related to each of these isotopes to help us calculate the average atomic mass for each of these elements in the periodic table. Because if we consult the periodic table, you'll notice that the atomic masses are often given underneath the element names. So if we look at scandium, titanium, all of these decimal values underneath the names, those are the average atomic masses. And if you notice, they're hardly ever whole numbers. There's always some decimal value. And the reason they're a decimal value is because the average atomic mass is actually what we refer to as a weighted average. All right, and what that means is I'm going to go and I'm going to add up the product of all the isotope abundances multiplied by all of the isotope masses in individual terms. Um, basically, the reason for this is because not every isotope exists to the same amount in nature for each of these elements. Some isotopes have uh, a lot more dominance over others in terms of how frequently we encounter them in nature. And so because of that, they should count more when considering the isotope's contribution to the average atomic mass for the element. And some isotopes for a particular element are barely present at all in nature. They're only a very small fraction of a percent of all of the element found in nature. And so those isotopes should count very little towards the average atomic mass. And so let me actually demonstrate how this is done, and I think it'll be a little bit more useful. All right, suppose I wanted to calculate the average atomic mass of silicon, okay? And silicon tends to have these three isotopes that occur in nature. Notice that silicon 28 is 92.23% abundance. Whereas if we take a look at silicon 29 and 30, their abundances are 4.67% and 3.1% respectively. So what I would do to calculate the average atomic mass for silicon is I would go 
And first, for silicon 28, I'm going to go and I'm going to take this abundance and convert it to a decimal. The way I do that is I move the, deci uh, move the decimal point two spots to the left. In other words, since this is a percentage, it's been multiplied by 100. So if I want the decimal equivalent, then I'm going to divide by 100 or move this decimal point two spaces to the left. So if I'm going to look at the decimal abundance of the isotopes of silicon, then this would be 0 0.9223. For silicon-29, it would be 0 0.0467, and for silicon-30, it'd be 0 0.0310. I'm going to take the decimal abundance for silicon-28, 0 0.9223. I'm going to multiply that by the mass of the silicon-28 isotope. So it would be 27.9769265. Okay, and then I'm going to add the product of the decimal abundance for silicon 29, that'd be 0 0.0467, times the mass of the silicon 29 isotope. So it'd be 28.9764947 AMU. Okay, to that I'm going to add the decimal abundance for silicon 30. 0 0.0310 multiplied by the mass of the silicon 30 isotope. So it would be 29.9737702 AMU. So if I take out a calculator and calculate each of these products and add them together, what I'm going to get is an average atomic mass that's about 28.1 atomic mass units. Now if we consult the periodic table and we look at silicon's average atomic mass, we see that it actually is very close to 28.1 atomic mass units. Now another example of this is, okay, what if I don't have the actual masses of the isotopes? All right, take this problem for example here, all right, where we're discussing rubidium. Okay. Notice I'm given the percent abundances, but I'm not given the actual masses exactly. What I can do is I can use the mass number of each isotope as an approximation for the mass of the isotope. But yet still carry out the same mathematical process. All right. So, for example, here if I'm going to calculate an average atomic mass for rubidium, I'm going to take, starting with rubidium 85, take its percent abundance, make it into a decimal, so 0 0.722, and since I don't have the actual mass of the rubidium 85 isotope, I'm going to use the mass number of rubidium 85 as an approximation. I'm going to do the same with rubidium 87. Well, if I do that, the percent abundance converted to a decimal for rubidium 87 is 0 0.278. And I'm going to multiply that by the mass number as an approximation for the mass of the isotope for rubidium 87. We're going to multiply that by approximately 87 atomic mass units. If I do that math, I end up with 85.6 atomic mass units. If I check the periodic table and I take a look at rubidium, okay, rubidium can be found here. And if I take a look at the atomic mass or the average atomic mass of rubidium, I end up with something that is actually very close to 85.6 atomic mass units. So now that we've done a couple of these examples, work through the follow-up assignment, all right, see if you can work some of these out, all right, and we'll reinforce in class. If there are any questions, again, email as usual, or if not, speak to me in class. Have a good night. 
See you in class tomorrow.